So Matt, I am so excited yeah. about today. I mean, we are both blessed that we get to drive all sorts of different cars. An M car test is great, and a classic M car test is even more fun because we get to revisit the cars that we might not have been able to drive at the time, yeah. um, but are so often talked about. Absolutely. Um, and one of the most talked about is this E30 M3. So what we are trying to do is decide what is the best BMW M car of all time. Of all time, yeah, that's a big... They've made some fantastic cars. They've made some amazing cars. Have we got the best three BMW M cars here? Because we've got the E30, which yeah. you have to have. You have right? to have, yeah. It's, um, it's the original, basically. Yeah. And then we've got an M3 CSL yeah. from 2003? Yes, or thereabouts, exactly thereabouts, Which yeah. is... Actually, you were saying that that's yeah. a car that I have missed pretty much completely. Yeah. I was working, I was working in this business yeah. then, but I did not drive it at the time. Well, so I'm I really picked, intrigued by that. I was fortunate enough to go out to Germany and bring the very first M3 CSL back to the UK. So I flew oh, out okay. to Germany. They gave me the keys to the car, and they said, "Get it back to London pretty much as quickly as you can." Superb. But that was an amazing day for me. And then we're going to bookend it all with a BMW M2 competition, yeah. which is a car we know pretty well. Yes. And we've driven several times before yep. in uh, other features and other videos. Yes. If you like those videos, if you like this video, please up thumb, subscribe. If you turn on notifications, you will never miss one. I think M3 GTS, so the V8, the E90 version, yep. that's a fantastic car. Yeah. I also like, I love the, um, the I M4 GTS. I know what you're going to say. So yeah. do I. I think that's a great car. And that reminds so me. So many people hate that car. No, and I, I think it's why. just, on the right conditions, it's just super. I agree. That reminds me very much actually of the CSL, but, but yeah. up 50% in terms of horsepower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And its basic dynamics yeah. are quite similar, I think. Yeah. So we're missing M5s. Yep. I haven't driven early six cylinder ones. You have. I have, yeah. E34, I wasn't blown away by. Mm -hmm. I love the F10 competition pack M5. That's a yeah, great car. Yeah. But they're heavy by the stage. They're heavy, yeah. The V10 M5 was great, but oh, I think there's so many things that... That gearbox is... That gearbox so, well, The range is too short. It's just... Yeah. yeah. And the other ones are sort of the, the V8, 400 horsepower V8. I don't know E39. what... E39. E39. Thank E39. you. Great engine. But, yeah, great engine. Sort of a brilliant cruising machine, but not... Yeah. I don't know. It didn't excite me like these. Huh. And we don't have the M1, which yeah. is a sensational supercar. Have you yeah. driven the M1? You've driven uh, I've driven the M1, yeah. 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 Great, uh, great thing. Yeah, it's a great thing, but it kind of yeah. doesn't feel in spirit like a, an M car. M car yeah. does, yeah. that, does that make sense? Yeah, no, definitely. I'll tell you why, for me, it doesn't, because M cars, what BMW have done so well with M cars is they can do everything. We've got four seats. This is nice and soft when you're cruising, but when you turn the wick up a bit, they are fantastic. You know, they haven't all been great at everything. So, you know, some, some of them have been better cruisers and some of them have been better sort of out and out sports cars, but they've all been able to do at least one of those two things. Yeah. You know, the ones that aren't great cruisers are fantastic sports cars. And the ones that aren't, that maybe missed out on, on being fantastic sports cars are, are just really cool everyday cars. Yeah. E36 M3 was probably the most disappointing to me. Um, See, I didn't try. I yeah, didn't try that was probably the most disappointing to me, yeah. the E36 M3. The Evo was better, and BMW realised that because they, they addressed it by giving it a bit more horsepower, yeah. sharpening the chassis. But that was probably the most disappointing M car to me, the, the E36. And I spent quite a lot of time on one of those as well, so. Yeah. All right, well, let's start. Yeah. Let's start here. Okay. I really like this car. I love this car. I think it's terrific. And what, yeah. what you're reminded of, is how brilliant the visibility is in old cars. Yep. How compact it feels. Yep. And it kind of feels like the car that defined for most people of a certain generation Definitely. what an M car ought yeah. to be. Yeah, ought to be, exactly. And I, and I do wonder if there's a little bit of sort of Peugeot 205 GTI syndrome where all subsequent fast BMWs yep. are kind of judged by the exactly. standards of this yep. and then not this. If you get in a modern M car, it's not generally like this is it this no, is definitely this yeah. is really lovely I mean it steers beautifully it feels light it feels agile you know it was it was built to homologate a racing car yeah. wasn't it but it's not a racing car no. in any in any sense I mean it's, it's soft my yeah. first driving impression of it was how soft it was yeah and on the reverse of what you say I think anyone who's not driven one of these would expect it to feel like the M2 competition pack does now yeah. so I think they I think if we've, we've grown up well I've you know I've grown up watching these things on telly seeing the posters, seeing them dressed up in their touring car livery um, and expecting some kind of fire-breathing monster, but actually they, that couldn't be further from the truth from no, this car. No, exactly. Yeah. It's just so delicate, isn't it, in a way? It's, the gearbox is really terrific, actually. Yeah. I really like that. And as it as it turns, it just settles into a normal, lovely, neutral huh? balance, yeah. doesn't it? You know, it's, it's got that sort of slight... It's a lot of roll by modern standards, yeah. inevitably. But that gives you plenty of feedback. You know what's coming. You know? Yeah. It's not gonna, it doesn't just transition into a slide. 
No, you, exactly. you get plenty of it telegraphs what's yeah. happening. You know, it starts to roll. And I can feel it from the passenger seat. I haven't even got my hands on the contact patch. Yeah. And I can feel, I can feel the grip. You can feel here. where the balance yeah, yeah, is going. Yeah. yeah. And it's a very delicate thing as it goes yeah. in and out of of neutral yeah. and oversteer and understeer. You know, that's the the balance I really like. Yeah. It's front engine, rear wheel drive. Yeah. Limited slip differential, manual yeah. gearbox. That. For a driver's car, is definitely yeah. absolutely spot on. And this is really one of those cars that gives rewards back what you put in. So the engine, you know, it's pretty ordinary below sort of three yeah, and a half, yeah, four yeah. thousand. But once you rev it out, it's really crisp and it just yeah. loves to rev. Yeah. And it begs you to rev. It's really this car is absolutely operating at its best when you're driving the little Dale Sabre. I think, like you say, it does do everything, doesn't it? Because actually, on the road, it's really comfortable. Really comfortable. It's looking in fifth we're doing 80 miles an hour and it's three and a half thousand yeah. revs but the thing with cars engineered in germany is yeah. they do tend to be seriously good at high speed cruising because yeah. that's part of the development process exactly. you know you're sitting on the autobahn at really high speed yeah i mean this just feels beautiful you know it's really nice i can feel it? as you come on off the throttle i can feel the yeah, weight yeah, transfer yeah, yeah. Yeah. it's a really old-fashioned not old-fashioned old school but yeah. not old-fashioned delicate way of doing yeah. things and I just really like that you know the, the contact patches are small the wheels aren't that big but what it's just engaging at sensible normal yeah. speeds but so engaging as well isn't it it's really what a fantastic. great basis for a for a, a saloon racing car yeah you know? totally yeah totally so Matt we jump from the E30 into this E46 and, you, and, and this is the very car you drove back from Germany. This is the car I drove back from Germany. So I've got a bit of a history with the CSL. Mm -hmm. Back in 2003, I had a phone call to say, look, we, we need a car actually for an auto car shoot. Can you come oh, okay. out? Yeah, can, can, you, can you fly out, yeah. pick one up and drive it back? And so that all my Christmases had kind of come at once on that day. Yeah. So from that day on, it's been one of my favorite M cars. So the E30 was, because it was so early, it didn't have any adjustments to it. You know, you got in and BMW, yeah, that, was it. that was it basically. Yeah. You know, you, you, you had what BMW had and you may do the best of it as the BMW did. This thing's got a few adjustments on it, so you can put it into sport mode, which I'm gonna do now. You can turn the ferocity of the gearbox up. Yeah. Oh, listen to that noise. <laughs> you can turn the SP off. As you have done. As I have done. That, well, that made that sound. That sound. It's, that is it's absolutely really special. fantastic. And again, the, can you feel the balance? It just kind of, yeah. it's not super stiff. It just, it gives There's you quite so a lot much roll, isn't there? Exactly. No reason but matter of What I've, because <laughs> what you don't get is anywhere really to, Hold on. To hold on because I've got this carbon fiber door insert. Yeah. Fixed bucket seats. Right, it's lovely. It's, really good, it? it's absolutely lovely. And again, it just feels so delicate. So it's, without everything, this weighs what 1310, is that right? Without air con and stereo yeah, and Yeah, so like it was like so, yeah. so the problem with this car thing when it was launched is it had mixed reviews. BMW said it was a GT3 rival. Um, it was twenty thousand pounds more expensive than the basic car, which was already good. So it's what, 60 grand? Yeah, 58, right. basically. And from what, at the time, people could see, you know, they, they wondered where their 20,000 pound went. So this has got 360 horsepower compared to the 343 of the, okay. the basic car. Yeah. Different gearbox software, aluminium bonnet, these amazing seats, yeah. different suspension setup, bigger brakes. So Just it, it was quite heavily reworked. Sensational the, wheels and tyres. Sensational wheels, wheels. wheels. It came on, on Cup 2 tyres. Yeah. Uh, the BMW kind of, warned you about they said you know you've got to be really careful with these tires and the wet there oh listen to that and it comes that with that amazing. amazing engine though. that is just phenomenal it? yeah. but it's not it's not a homologation well, special is it no, it's, it's just not, because they wanted to do it is. yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it is absolutely Mate, i do awesome. hate being a passenger most it's of the time but with you <laughs> it's usually okay i'm just playing I'm, with it because it's just, just so fun the gearbox is horrendous, I have to oh, say. Could you, only, could you only get the SM, SMG? The it's such a, it's such a shame. It's such a shame. It's such a shame. Look at that, it's just so easy. Mate, as somebody once said in the comments, how on earth can he drive properly when he lies so far back? <laughs> It's so forgiving as well. It's got a little bit of understeer, but it's reassuring understeer. Yeah, it's and, it's, to, and it's front engine. It's it front should, engine. It should, it exactly, should have really. Yeah. And it's a, yeah, it's a road car. It should have a tiny bit of stabilising understeer. Exactly, yeah. Trailer brakes through it. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. That's amazing. It is a really, I love these seats as well. So I, I do as well. These yeah, are, I do. And they're, they're fixed back, but they're absolutely fine. I think they're Recaro pole positions covered. Oh, okay. Which are, which are, and these seats also end up in, so if you get an M3 GTS, they're in that. They're in yeah. the current, M4 GTS, but a bigger size. Oh, okay. So they've retained these seats and they've just dressed them up slightly differently. Yeah. Um, 
but it's that. Listen to that. I'm going to slow down a bit just, to, just so I can hear it. It revs. Listen to that in Luxembourg. So, so you did not get this in the standard M3, and you don't get it in any M car up to this day. No. This is the best sounding M car they've ever made, as far as I'm concerned. I think that is totally true. But I reckon the only M engine that sounds better than this yeah. is in a McLaren F1. Of course, yeah, because that was but two. But other than that, because that's two. two. I mean, it's not two of these, but it is two. Two E46. It is two, 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 two six-cylinders, yeah. yeah. And it's just so adjustable. Even if I'm turning on the brake, look, in goes a nose. Yeah. Little lift. Oh, I'm not going to go crazy. It's an old car, so I'm going to be a bit delicate with it, but okay, early on the power. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is it's absolutely morning. beautiful, yeah. And it's that, for me, it's that, it's that's the rent, the engine is going through sort of four or five yeah. thousand. That's just when it's, it's sweet spot. and it's absolute. It, but it, it just feels like it wants to, you know, it wants to rev and yeah. the floor response is lovely as well. If I can get BMW to recreate anything, for me, it'd probably be this, actually, even over the E30. So if you said to me, you're right, that. give BMW that's interesting. any spec that you want to recreate yeah. the perfect M car, I think I'd have more of this in it than more the of E30. This in it than the yeah, E30. definitely, yeah. Okay, what would you have from the E30? From, e, pro, have, from yeah. E30, yeah. I would have the compactness. Yep. Okay. I would have some of the lightness, yep. and I would have a manual gearbox. Yeah. Not necessarily that manual gearbox, yeah. but a manual gearbox. I'll, I'll definitely have that gearbox off you. Yeah. Because this gearbox is frankly horrendous. It's really poor, isn't it? The, the difference between this being a brilliant M car and yep. yeah, yeah, almost absolutely. one of the best cars in the world yeah. is, is probably that gearbox. I, get, I agree. Because I love the brake pedal feel in this yep. and, the, and the reassurance, yep. and, and all the control weights are spot on. Yep. Yeah, like, there's, there's loads I would have from in here. Yeah. Loads I'd have from in here. Like, I mean, I'm a sucker for light cars that you can yeah. see out of really easily. But this isn't heavy, you know? Bear in mind, no, 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 true. For, for it's only kilos, kilos. So it's about 100 it? kilos heavier than an E30. Yeah. It's not a lot, is it? So no, it's, it's quite a lot, lot bigger. Yeah, it's got a lot more power. Yeah. I love the sound. I love that induction yeah. noise. It's absolutely beautiful. And again, you're right, the brakes feel fantastic. Again, there was a lot of time at the time I read about the brakes not being up to scratch, but from, really? from my I think they're spot on. Certainly on the road. Yeah, I think the brakes were fine for what you've done there. I love the extra speed that this thing's got. Yeah. I love the noise. And you have to, it's not like it suddenly surprises you, is it? Because it goes to what, 7.9? So yeah, you've exactly, really got yeah, to, exactly, yeah. you've and got to want it to get yeah. it. Yeah, and max power's right up that at 7.9 yeah. as well, I think. Yeah. So as we were saying earlier, you won't just find yourself doing 120 miles an hour. No, you've you got to really work for that 120, but when you do work for it, the rewards are just fantastic. Yeah. And again, just now as we're cruising, it's beautifully damped. Yeah. It's quiet, we can have a chat. Yeah. It's a wonderful thing. So the extra so it's what, 13, 1300 kilos for 360, 360 horsepower, brand, yep. which I think is quite a nice blend for the yep. road. Exactly, yeah. So 60 was like four and a half seconds. It's quick by any standards, even yeah. by today's standards, you know? Yeah. Well, let's see what the yeah, modern see what the, interpretation yeah. is. This is as good as I remember. Right, and so then to the final card. My only thing is, should we have had this or should we have had a 1M coupe? 1M, well, 1M coupe, this, yeah, this, this is probably M. the best representation of where BMW are at now, so. Yeah, so actually, I think it's fair from that, from that point of view. And actually, I like this almost as much, if yeah. not as much as I like the 1M yeah, coupe, definitely, yeah. I think. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think this is just an M coupe moved on a bit. It's got a bit more power. Yeah. It's got a bit more of everything than uh, one M coupe. No manual gearbox with us today. No manual gearbox, which is a bit of a shame because I do prefer it. But it fits yeah. with the it fits yeah. with the current ethos again. Absolutely. What I like about the M2 is you can't change the dampers. You just get what you're given, yep. don't you? But you can change the engine, which I'll put in Sport Plus, and the steering, which I will put in Comfort. In Comfort, obviously, yeah, that's the best because way. that's why that's why when gearbox is in its fastest mode. Yep. I don't like things that the cars that ask you to do too many different things to get them yeah. set up in the way you. Want to? I just want to press, yeah. you know, a couple of buttons, done. and then I'm done. You have got an M memory button here as well. You I've got an M memory button which I can program, which is yeah. very good. This car feels bang up today. I mean, it's got a digital dash. Everything's lovely in here. It is nice inside. It's nice inside. I guess still we can fit four people if yeah. we want to. And yeah, like you say, it feels like a thoroughly modern interpretation of of M. Again, yeah, it's 60 miles an hour under 2,000 RPM, and it's comfortable enough Absolutely. to do distances. And yeah. it feels a bit more muscle car. Yeah than certainly the M3, yep. and also a bit the CSL as well. Yeah, because again, the CSL, you've really got to work that engine. This thing's yeah. got so much torque because of the turbos. Yes, exactly. But actually, at any rev range, and in any gear, this thing will go. Whereas in the CSL, yeah. you've, you know, you've got to really work hard to get it to, yeah. to go. But that's part of the charm of that particular car. Yeah. So do you think that M has changed over the years? Do you think our perception of M has changed over the years? I've got a really weird fit, um, theory on M. I think that M is no particular thing because you, you've got to look at the E30 and then look up to 
a current four-wheel drive M5 now. Yeah. They are both M cars. They are both really good at what they do. Yeah. And I think what M is, M is about making the best of what's available for that particular car. That, that's my theory on, on an M car. You know, you can't say that the M5 is no good because it's not as light or as nimble as an E30. Yeah. Because it's so good in other ways. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. See? That to me is what M cars are about. It's still got the balance, hasn't it? Yeah. It still is a front engine, rear wheel drive. Yeah. Limited slip differential. Yeah. And like you say, they, they all do different things in different ways. Yeah. But they all will do but that. Fundamentally. It's got a lot of grip this one. Nice. Lovely. <laughs> they will all, they will all do ultimately that. do that. Yeah. And that's a really engaging, yeah. honest balance. And I yeah. suppose it's the 50 50 weight distribution yeah. thing. They've all got a bit more power than the rear tyres. Yeah. Strictly have grip. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And literally all of them will do that. That's the big yeah. thing from the E30 up to the current four wheel drive M5. Every car in between that, yeah. if you were that way inclined and you could do it, they would all give you the opportunity to do that. Yeah, and if you're right, even the, even the E30, even the CSL, yeah. even the 1M Coupe and the, the old M Coupe. Yeah, the ZM Coupe. And the Z3M yeah. Roadster yeah. and stuff like that. They all have that little bit of understeer on the way yeah. in that you can sort of trail brake through and then and then you can do that. And then you can do yeah. that if you want to. But then you can get back in all of them and drive home again. Yeah. That's a really cool. And where, where the M cars for me differ from the AMG and the Audi, yeah, certainly the, the, the later AMG are better at it, but you couldn't, they, they didn't have that last 10% hooligan that all the M cars have always had. Yeah, I think that's So, true. you know, yeah. the AMGs were, were, were great at, you know, at, at being fast and, and in a straight line. It's and like hot rod kind of hot thing. Hot rod, yeah. Really. yeah. But up until the last, you know, up until the kind of the C63, yeah. came out, they they didn't have that last dynamic edge that the M cars have got now. And this has got some shove, hasn't it? Wow. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Uh, yeah, having thought more about it, they say that. It's got, it's just, <laughs> as it goes light over there, it just goes, yeah, I can <laughs> stick, I can I'm stick back out below. Well. Not only can I drift, I can jump. <laughs> nice, look at that, wow. I remember in 2007, maybe, yeah. getting in the M3 that came out then, yeah. and people going, it's a bit disappointing, isn't it? It's not quite, you know, it's not quite what the old one was, and they get people say it's not quite the one before it was. Yeah. And they, so they've had little peaks and troughs, and that M3 competition, which yeah. you've got, I've you've got, still one, got yeah, I've got, I've got it. I, I think it. it's brilliant. Yeah. I think it's absolutely yeah. fantastic. I love it. So all right, I'm I'm comfortable. Actually, it's been a really useful exercise to me to go all of these and then go, yeah, actually. An M car is still an M. An yeah. M car now is, you know, it's is what it has always been. Different, yeah. I mean, different yeah. in how it goes about it, and the and the numbers, and yeah. the and the so on and so forth. But fundamentally, they do a really lovely thing. They, they? Do, they yeah. all do a really nice thing, and right. they're still working with what they've got because at the moment, BMW don't have a high rev in Nazi yeah, aspirated engine yeah, they can yeah, put yeah. in this car. So what yeah. they've done is they've made the best of this current generation turbocharged yeah. car. Yeah. And it works, it suits this car perfectly. Yeah, and they still kept so, six cylinders as well. Which exactly, is something. yeah, still six All right, cylinders. So yeah. what elements of this would you, if you were creating your ideal M car, yeah. what elements of this would you put in it? If I had to go with a auto as such, yeah. I'd have this gearbox over the SMG gearbox and the CSL. If I couldn't have a manual, I'd have that. I love the speed of this thing. Yeah. So although that CSL is fast enough. Yeah, I it's fast enough for me. It I can think. always be faster, <laughs> you know. I'm not sure how much else I'd have. No. I, 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 this, exactly, I mean, yeah. I like how this steers for a new car. Yeah. I like how the, the engine is for a new car. Yeah. I like how light it is for a new car. But yeah. by the standards of the other two. Yeah, I think, I think I'd think i say, yeah, I think very little. I think, you know, I'd want a bit of gearbox in this here. So, and this gearbox yeah. would be absolutely fine in it. Yeah. And, and maybe a bit more, a bit more torque, you know, the outright speed isn't it? Yeah, that's Maybe fair. a bit more torque. I'd, I'd have, the, okay, I'd have the torque specifically from this, yeah. stick it in the CSL. And if it could sound like the and CSL keep, on the way I'd through. I'd keep the CSL sound, yeah. yeah. I'd keep the CSL, yeah. So I'd borrow the torque from this, I'd borrow the gearbox, and I'd put it in the CSL. What a car. Come oh, on, car. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I take the, uh, the weight of the E30 and I'd put that in the CSL. And yeah. it's funny, isn't it? Everything exactly. migrates towards the CSL, yeah, which yeah. suggests to me, if you were going to name the greatest M car of all time, yeah. what are we going to agree? What do you think it is? Well, well I, I think the closest to it. The closest just, to it is the CSL, the, I think. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, obviously, the late the M4 GCS is an amazing car. I think it's brilliant. Um, I really like it's it. It's so fast and it has got that element of speed that we, we spoke about in this. But yeah. in terms of the purity of, of the car, the CSL to me is yeah. 
is it? Absolutely epic. Yeah. yeah. So there you have it. One conclusion of a fashion. No M car is absolutely perfect, but some are better and more perfect than others. Yeah. And if you were to pick the best BMW M car ever made, it's the M4 G. No, it's the it is the M3. <laughs> so, it is the M3 CSL. Yeah. Yeah. But the M3 yeah, but GTS E90 is very good as well. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs>